Hello. All right, so in this video, what I'm going to be showing you is how to make a lace-up detail um, on a shirt or a pant or the side of a shirt even. Um, <laughs> just how to make a, a lace-up detail on any piece of garment clothing uh, fairly painlessly. So what I've got here is a dress and uh, what I'm attempting to create is this dress right here. Now, if you've ever used Marvelous Designer or Clo and tried to lace something up, you might look at this and think, well, that's insane. And yeah, it is a little bit insane, but not as insane as you might think. And I'm going to show you the process by which um, I make lace up details like this. So I've got my two sides here um, that I'm going to make the uh, lacing across. And I'm just going to go up to my internal lips tool create an ellipse about the right size right there about right in the middle and then i'm going to go up to my regular internal line tool and i'm going to make a vertical line like this now i'm going to do something a little bit odd here but um it's quite important uh well for me it is because i'm i'm making you know 25 of these probably i think 24 25 grommets down the front anyway what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and select this uh vertical internal line and i'm going to change the fold angle to 181. and the reason i do that is because um actually i'm going to change the outside ring to 182. Uh, i'm not sure if i'm actually going to need to have both of those set differently but i am um, and the reason I do that is because there's no way to group internal lines as a complete group um, so that you can just select one and it selects a whole bunch of them. But what you can do is you can go up to an internal line and you can right click on it and you can select all with the same property and you've got fold strength, fold angle, and fold rendering. So since I set this to 182, when I have a whole bunch of these grommets, selected, I won't have to go in and select them all one at a time. I can just right click on that and select that fold angle and it will select all of them for me. And so that's a little way to select a whole bunch of those at the same time. Now, if you're only working with four or five grommets, this is probably unnecessary, but because I'm working with so many, and if you ever are working with that many, you can do that. So what I'm gonna do now is just take both of those and copy and paste them. And I'm gonna zoom out so I can see this entire thing. And when I control C, control V, uh, you hold shift that just keeps things vertical and you right click and that'll bring up this dialog box where you can paste it even intervals so i'm just gonna scroll up and get my interval right that looks about okay let's do 20. okay so just like that and the reason you want to zoom out is uh, obviously because when you're in this dialog box you can't adjust the screen view which is weird that you should be able to adjust that but you can't anyway you get all those um down like that now what we've got to do is we've got to cut and sew all of these internal uh these these circles and we've got to cut them out um, and i do want to cut them i don't want to delete them because they are very important so what you can do is obviously double click it selects the one double click again and it will select all of them but the problem is if I try and cut and sew this, it's gonna tell me it can't cut them because I've got this vertical line in the middle here. So that is why we applied the fold angle. So now we can just select this, select all with the same property, fold angle, and that will select just these, uh, the round parts and it won't select the vertical parts. Oh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm, even though I want these symmetrically linked, um, symmetric across i'm not going to i'm going to remove the linked editing so they're not symmetrically linked because when you cut these out and uh when they are symmetrically linked somehow something messes up where a lot of the uh these little circle cutouts will not symmetrize right correctly and i have a lot of problems with that so and it also just tends to take a lot longer. So I'll just do one side and then copy and paste it symmetrically over when I'm finished rather than trying to work on both at the same time. 
So if you have trouble, remove the linked editing and uh, just work on one side at a time and then copy and symmetric paste it over when you're finished. All right, so I'm gonna select all with the same property, fold angle. Now I can cut and sew and it will cut and sew those very nicely. And I guess it cut and sew this other side too, but I actually don't even want this. So I'm not even gonna have that in right now. And I think I will uh, just kind of deactivate all this stuff so that it stays in place. Okay. Wait a minute, I didn't need to delete that at all. Okay, hang on. I'm thinking it weird. Also, I got a new keyboard, which is a little bit more clacky. So if it's louder than normal, I do apologize. I've tried to make it as quiet as I can, but I, I know it's a little annoying. I apologize for that. Um, okay, so I guess, yeah. It doesn't matter that they're not symmetrically linked right now, actually. That is fine. So let me just kind of adjust these patterns. All right. Give me a little room to work. Okay. Now we have these. Now what we're going to do is uh, create the laces. And this is not going to be... Um, this is a little bit of a cheat, uh, but if you try and do it, when I work, I tend to try and make everything as accurate to real life as possible, but this is the one area where I will cheat because it just, if you try and have your threads loose in these grommets, it just straight up will not work. The collisions will just pull them out immediately. So um, what we're going to be doing is sewing single strips. So just make your, your lace about like, you know, however wide you want it. And one side is going to sew to here and the other side is going to sew to there. And so I'm just going to make it about like that. And then move these over. And positioning for something like this, when, especially when you have so many, if you, again, if you only have five or six, positioning isn't nearly as important when you have, but when you have a lot of them, positioning becomes very important just so you can keep track of where the sewing goes because it's extremely easy to get confused. So uh, position, very important. And I will move this down to the bottom here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, make this diagonal like this, because I will know that di making it diagonal in the uh, 2D window actually doesn't affect anything in the 3D window. It could be any direction and it wouldn't change here. This is all just for um, my own visual understanding and it's gonna make things a lot easier. Uh, so I'm gonna make one this way and then I'm gonna copy and paste this right on top and I'm gonna right click on there and flip it vertically. So you've got another one that goes the other way like this. And now I'm going to sew this side, oops, this to here, and this here. Now you'll notice that these sewings don't match up the lengths. It doesn't really matter too much um, for something like this. If you really want to be precise, you can go in and adjust the, uh, the length to match. I'm not going to. Anyway, I'm going to sew from here to here and from here to here. Now, one thing I do like to do also uh, when I'm working with a lot is to actually distribute these holes more evenly so they match up uh, in, in here, or they match up just so they're more, I have more space so that everything can match up. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these pieces right here. I'm gonna right click on this bottom one and I'm going to go to distribute and I want to distribute them vertically. And then I'm just going to start distributing them like that. So about 27.5. And remember, it's 27.5. You want to remember that number because you have to do it on the on the other side as well. So that should be all right. So I'll take all these, right click on them, distribute vertically and 27.5. And that's, that's going to allow me to um, have the room so when I paste here, this will always line up 
these these uh, points right here will line up and line up. So you always know where the sewing goes because you always know that this sewing is going to go to this piece right here. It just makes it much easier. So now what I'm going to do is just, um, well, first of all, let me go ahead and uh, simulate this so that it flies on. Oops, let those go. Okay, so my lengths are a little bit too long. And the other thing I'm gonna do also is turn my particle distance on these pieces down to maybe five. Let's check that. Uh, let's go even a little bit lower, four. And because they're pretty small pieces, that's not going to affect things too much in terms of uh, simulation speed. Okay. And these are also too long still, uh, but we'll shorten those up later. I think this, will it be all right? Let me, uh, no, I don't want to sew those yet. Yeah, I think I'll make these a little bit smaller right now. So I'll just shrink those down a bit. Because this should open up and stretch it out a little bit. Okay, well anyway, this, this should be okay. Now I'm just going to, again, go like this. I'm gonna copy and paste right to here. And because these are correctly oriented, you can just go from, so from here to here, here to here, here to here and here to here. And again, make sure your sewing isn't flipped. Like, make sure your sewing doesn't do that. And do it again. And... Here. And I'm just gonna go all the way up, and this is the part where I will fast forward because it's kind of boring. All right, I've got all of these uh, sewn together and now they are, as you can see, kind of spread out. So I'm just gonna grab all these and this shouldn't be too much of a problem when I go in to simulate these. I'll just uh, strengthen everything. So select this and this and we'll strengthen it, not freeze it. And Simulate and these should fly on without too much trouble. I think it should be okay. And yeah, looks like they worked out pretty well So those all went on the right way now we can go ahead and un sew this piece here to open it up And let the uh, You know the threads do their job now this is pretty good but what we still need to do is I want this to be an over under. Uh, oh, and there are gonna be some strings that will be turned and you can, I usually don't worry about this because I like the randomness and the naturalness that it gives you. But if you do wanna turn these, these are actually really hard to, to try and uh, straighten out. But you can take your uh, lasso, your, your select mesh box tool up here and I, if there's a better way to do this, I'd love to know, but um, this is the only way I know how to do it. And then you can kind of try and rotate around the axis like this, simulate. That uh, didn't work so well. But that's, that's the way you would try and uh, straighten those out. But usually I don't, again, worry too much about it. Uh, anyway, I want these to be over under. So we need to get some of these strings underneath and the other half on top. And this is another part that's a little tedious, but it's, you know, it's not gonna be painful to do. It's just gonna be uh, repetitive. So again, I'm going to go up here to my select mesh box. And, um, oh, this is now the benefit of having them in the X pattern like this, because if you had both of them just straight across, you would have to select one side and then the other side. Uh, separately with this, you can just select once and go up right up to the cross where they both cross right there and then go over and make sure your uh, simulation is turned off. And then you pull that back, you pull that back in there. And then when you simulate, that should, oh, not quite, let's try again. Okay. 
And this is just a brute force way of pushing things into the right position. Okay, so now these go to the back and then they come out to the front. And so we're just gonna, again, do this same process all the way down. So I'm gonna go select up to there. Oh, and so you can do this with the simulation on, but sometimes it's, you know, it, it can mess things up. Um, I usually like to turn my simulation off when I do this because it is kind of brute forcing it. Um, but anyway, that's, that's, that's the process. So now we just go down and do it. So this is again, where we're gonna fast forward because it's just gonna be the same thing. All right, now we've got this all laced up and it's looking, looking all right. So pretty good. Um, okay, so now what we want to concern ourselves with are these uh, the holes that the, thing, uh, that the um, strings go through. And obviously they're opaque right now, um, but I don't want to delete these uh, these pieces because they're the only thing holding the strings in place. If I delete those, those strings just clip right through. So what we're gonna do is just go up to our fabric properties and we're gonna add a new fabric, just a new fabric. And the only thing we need to concern ourselves with is the opacity. And we're just going to turn the opacity down to zero on this, on this new piece of fabric. And then we are going to select all of our little cutouts and we are going to apply that to that fabric. And now they are completely transparent. Um, oh, I'd like the other uh, important property we need to apply to this uh, fabric, this uh, transparent fabric is right down here. Um, we want to change the physical property to trim full grain leather. And what that's going to do is it's going to just make these little discs fairly rigid and, um, you know, so they won't bend very much at all. So go ahead and do that. And that's just going to help them keep that round shape. And now, as you can see, this is actually a fairly uh, stable um, thing. It's pretty stable. And that's that's how you thread this. Now let's put the grommets on because the grommets are important too. Um, and what's cool about the grommets is even if you're um, exporting this to something like ZBrush, you can, and you have a specific type of grommet you wanna use, you can use it and we're going to be doing it by going into the button menu and just selecting the button and up here you um, can go down to your shape and you see you've got a lot of button options we want one of the grommet options now you can actually bring in a custom obj if you want a custom grommet on your object and it will um and you can use it as a button but for us i'm for me i'm just going to be using this uh default grommet type shape and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take that and just apply it to one of these grommets to every um little cutout and just get it right about in the middle i'm just going to eyeball this and well the other thing we need to do is of course set up our properties so let's change the width to like oops not 15 10 if that's the right width hmm. And I'll change this to a metal material as well. Maybe 11, let's change it up to 11, a little bit bigger. Okay, and now I'm just going to take my button and apply it to every single one of these uh, little cutouts. And again, this is where I'll fast forward because I'm just putting on a bunch of grommets. Okay, now we've got our grommets on. Now, you can see a couple problems and you probably are thinking of a couple problems as well. First of all, there's a fairly large gap in here. So we need to fix that. And second of all, you're thinking, well, those are buttons. Buttons are insane with their collisions. Like you just tap them and they just completely freak out. So why do you use the buttons? Well, to answer that question, 
all we need to do is go and select all of our buttons. And this is, again, this is important if you want this to work at all. Turn your collisions off. So the collisions are now off. Nothing will be intersecting with these. And also because they are sewn to this um, trim full grain leather material, which is fairly straight and rigid, they will stay flat like this. So um, now to get them in the right uh, position, again, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. Oops, take my button and select all of these. And in the thread length, we can actually go negative on our thread length. And so because these, I think the thickness is three millimeters, I'm gonna go for the thread length of negative two. Well, maybe even more, negative 2.5. I want to get them fairly flat in there. Now, because the collisions are off, um, these they, they won't. Sometimes these uh, st uh, strings will kind of intersect with with the grommets, but um, it should. If you get them fairly flush with the fabric, it should look pretty good and uh, create a fairly nice effect. And. Yeah, there we go. Now everything, the grommets are staying right where they should, moving with fibers, and so this all can stretch real nice. Now, obviously because these are sewn into these little uh, cutouts right here, the strings can't move freely um, between themselves, or uh, between itself, so um, if you need to lengthen these strings, you do have to lengthen them manually. So I'm just gonna go go ahead and say, I want you know this top to be open a little bit more. So I'm gonna actually just rotate these flat and then you would double click on that and kind of scale them out. And again, if you have like a V big V shirt with a lace or the string that goes up this way, you're gonna wanna uh, make the length correct when you make it right at first um, and then sew them up. Uh oh. And yeah, sometimes this causes problems where that kind of goes out in front. But um, anyway, to lengthen them, you just kind of scale them up and down. It's it's not the best way, but it's it's the way you have to do it when you use this this uh, method right here. Let me just put that back. And... Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's the process I use to create these these. Uh, this kind of lace up detail on a dress. Um, I hope that helps. I know I get asked about this a lot and for a long time I, I really had no idea how to do this either. And so this is just kind of the way I came up with. Uh, I hope I hope if you've ever wanted to do this, you can now do it and uh, make something really cool with uh, this, this lace up technique. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Till next time, bye.